Many of you probably have not been at our middle school campus. But if you, I, I, I challenge you and I encourage you to visit our middle school campus, and you will be amazed at, at the work that Mr. Polk and others are doing on, on our campus. Mr. Polk, can you stand up as well? Mr. Polk has done a phenomenal job there. All right, all right so let's move on, because I, I didn't want to stay there all day, but I wanted you to know the first goal, the first aim was that we improve academically and that we be exemplary by 2014, and we're on our way. I want you to know that. So what, is the, what about the finances? I'm glad you asked. I know that was on everybody's, I'm glad you asked. So, but in order to appreciate where we are today as it relates to financially, we have to take a look back to where we were, you know, before. And, and, and really, so we have a couple charts here. Ms. Kazar is our new finance, uh, uh, chief finance officer, financial officer. And when she, when she actually interviewed, I asked her to give me a five-year picture. I need to find out. We need to do an autopsy on how do we get to the point financially that we were, that we were at. And... If I could find out and know and be clear about how we got into the position to where we had 133000 in our fund balance, if I could be clear about how we got there and how do we go from there to $3 million, and then how do we go from $3 million to $7 million, if I understood how, how, those, how those fluctuations occurred, then I can make sure that we never went back. And so we provide, she provided this, this uh, chart here for us, which gives us a picture, a five-year analysis of, 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 of what's been occurring in Lancaster ISD. The thing I wanted you to point out is look at 2019. What you see is we have been able to reduce our expenses to a level to where our expenses remain consistently below our revenue. And that's ideal. I mean, that's finance 101. We want to make sure our revenue remains above our expenses. Whatever we need to do in order to make sure that our revenue remains below our expenses. And you see that that trend is occurring. It's a positive trend. This is even in the midst of declining state revenues and, and, and the state legislator really, really, uh, um, I don't, let me not even talk about that. Let's move on, okay? <laughs> let me just not even talk about that. But, but anyway, you all understand where we are, right, as it relates to state funding. You all have been listening to the news. All right. So and then I want to make sure that this is, this is important that you see this as well. When we're budgeting, we, the board has made, it, has made it very clear. In my interview, it was very clear that we need to take a conservative approach to budgeting. And we need to make sure that when we create a budget, we're going to create a surplus budget. That means when we create a budget, we're going to make sure that, there is, that we make some contribution to our fund balance. In other words, we're not going to spend all the money that we expect to get. All right? Every year, we're going to budget to be, able to, make, to be able to place money into our fund balance. And what you can see here is our fund balance, the goal that was set in the strategic plan that you all set in the board directive was that we have 15% of our expenses in our fund balance, in our savings account, in our rainy day fund for, you know, it's for something tragic. If something tragic happens, we have that. Right now, today, we have 18%. We have 18%, and that's actually about seven, that's about $7 million in our fund balance so that we are positioned so that if the state, if the state legislator, if they decide not to send the payments on time, or if they decide not to fund education at the level that they've committed to in the Constitution, which is obviously they decided not to do that. Oh, I want to say that. Okay. All right, let's keep going. But anyway, we know we're prepared if they decide not to do that, right? And we're, we're, we're anticipating them not doing that, and so we're prepared here locally to be able to, be able to deal with that. All right? So the next piece I've heard a lot about, and this is the last one really, is college and career readiness. We've talked about the fact that we want to make sure when our kids leave us, that, that they leave us uh, with, with more than a high school diploma. You've heard about that. One of the first meetings I had was, was with Mayor Knight, and we sat down and we talked about what it is we want to have kids, what, what it is we wanted to have happen to kids as a result of them attending our schools. And the first thing that we agreed upon is that we wanted to make sure that when our kids graduate, that they leave us with more than a high school diploma. We said we need to make sure that they leave us with choices and opportunities. But not only just that, we also wanted to make sure that they understood that they have a responsibility and the ability to improve their community and have a positive impact on the lives of other folks. And so we just wanted to make sure that they, and we, we have implemented uh, several initiatives that will help us to achieve that objective. As it relates to college and career readiness, you'll see in the booklet, I just point this out really quickly, that 90% of our graduating seniors have uh, letters of acceptance from last year, received a letter of acceptance to a college, university, a trade school, mil the military, or we have documented uh, uh, evidence that they have, they're entering into the workforce. That's important, but I'm not naive. I recognize that that's simply the first step. 
that we have to make sure that when they get to the college and the university, that first they're not, get, they're not having to take developmental courses, that they don't end up after a year with this large amount of debt that they can't uh, pay, and it just creates a situation where we're not doing them any services. So we want to make sure also that we increase our career technology and that we make sure that kids have an opportunity to get certifications when they leave us and all that. And so I, I just want you to understand that we're serious about what we're trying to do in LISD. You know, you're here today because I, I believe that you understand, as Horace Mann did in the past, that you fit. And I'm, thinking, and I'm speaking of you, meaning our, our, our business owners in our city and our, and our religious leaders and, and, and others. You, you're here today because you realize, you realize that you fit into this puzzle. You understand that beyond all other devices, beyond all other devices, Ms. Carol, I know you're smiling at me. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> because you understand beyond all other devices that education is the great equalizer of the conditions of men. It's the balance wheel of social machinery. You understand that we cannot be, we, uh, we can't be content. To wait and see what will happen. We, the people in this room, and I'm not preaching, I'm just talking to y'all because we we, we're the army. The people in this room, we must be determined to make the right things happen. So what? That was the first question. LISD is on the move. I hope you leave understanding that LISD is on the move toward excellence. Now what? We only get there, because we're not there yet, we only get there if you help us. You, the missing, you are the missing piece to our puzzle. Now, we have already created some pathways to partnerships. We've been working with our religious leaders, and I'd like for the religious leaders who, who are already working with us to please stand just for a second. I want to acknowledge your sacrifice for being here. So the religious leaders that are here, I want you to stand. Thank you. And, and what you see is just really a small, a small number of the people who are actually working. I have like three pages, four pages of all the different things that different organizations are actually already doing to help us. But I want them to at least to acknowledge, acknowledge them because they're here. The next step is that, you know, there, there are pathways to partnerships. There are pathways and there are several things that you can do. There, there are actually four things and we've, we've talked about these four and many of you are already a part of it so I won't, I won't go on. But the next step is for us to develop a coalition. And I talked with the city manager, and I talked with the mayor. And, and our next step, so the, the next step, now what? We have to create a coalition in, in the city between decision makers who are a part of the city, a part of the school district, a part of our religious community, and a part of our business community. That, and we have to be willing to come around the table and say, look, here are the problems that are facing our community. It's not a city problem. It's not a church problem, it's not a business problem, it's not a school problem. We have issues that are facing our community that if we don't address, <laughs> yeah, that, that if we don't address, then these students here and others, they're going to be the ones that have to deal with it. If I'm worried about I'm the school and I'm not going to get involved in the churches and the churches, that's not the church's responsibility, or if I'm the city and I'm worried about that's the school's responsibility, or if I'm the school and I'm saying that's the city, that is not going to help us, right? We can, because we can't have excellence unless we're all working together. So, you know, I, I just want to wrap up, but I just want to, want to make sure that, that, that we're clear that the puzzle will not be complete unless decision makers and each one of these organizations are willing to go, come to the table and say, look, here are the issues that we're facing. How can we leverage the resources to help each other to solve these problems? It's not political. Hopefully it's moral and it's ethical, but it's not political. I want you to understand that. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate, you know, your, your sacrifice and your time. And I, and I definitely appreciate my, the principals because they're doing the work every day. I appreciate the business owners. That I, and what I need from you business owners, if you can't help, if you can't mentor, if you can't partner with a school, or if you can't uh, 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 adopt, a, adopt a campus, can you just simply pass the positive word 
that LISD is on the move. That's all, that's, if that's all you can do, that's great. That's what we need you to do. And so, we, again, I appreciate you, being, you for being here and understand that you are a piece of the puzzle. All right? Thank you.